Thank you all so much for coming. I mean, some came from the east, some from the west, some from the south, and some from other parts of Michigan. That's great. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Let's think together about faith, family, and farming. And first, I'd like to go to the past. My grandfather was Joseph Moss, and he lived with his family in southwest Pennsylvania. That was very hilly country, and Grandma was a farmer, and you go grow, grow good crops on hills, row crops especially, and so he heard that there was land available in Michigan, so he made that trip to Michigan. He went to Fairview and also to Bayport. I'm so glad he chose Bayport for farming ground because Grandpa was a good farmer and he chose some of the best land in the state. Well, it took a lot of work. Can you imagine? There was no turnpike to travel on, so Grandpa's family had to be all packed up and put into a train car with all their belongings, and then another train car had the cows and the horses on, and two of the older family boys had to ride with them and take care of them and feed and water them on the way out. So it was a lot of work, but Grandpa invested that into his family. After they got to Michigan, well, first I should say he bought that farm where Tim Moss lives now, that 160 acres. After the family got to Michigan, uh, they began farming and did very well because within five years he was able to build a nice home. They put up a big barn and a granary and things were going well. And Grandpa cared about family because just west of him, <coughs> Uncle Ed lived. Just across the road, Aunt Mary and her husband. Just to the east was my father and mother, and they got their start there on the 40 acres that belonged to Grandpa. And then just on the corner to that was Uncle Sherman. So you see, it was a, quite a family affair. Grandpa cared about family. Well, how about Grandpa's faith? I didn't have one-on-one -on -one time with Grandpa. Actually, I was just a teenager when he passed away. But my older sister, Gertrude, wanted to attend high school. And the way she was able to do that, she boarded with Grandpa and Aunt Emma, and they lived right next to the high school. And Gertrude tells me that in the morning, Grandpa would be seen sitting quietly in the corner of the room, his sitting room, with his Bible in his hand. He would read some scripture, he would have prayer, and then he would sing. I think he probably sang, I owe the Lord a morning song of gratitude and praise for all the kind mercies he has shown in lengthening out my days. That's memories of Grandpa. Now let's shift to my father. Like I said, father and mother lived on the 40 acres at the corner, right south of where we live now. Um, <coughs> Grandpa owned the farm, and it was 40 acres, but that was where they were living at the time. And then came 1930. Wow, on the third day, they had a baby boy born, and they named him Glenn William. <laughs> and Mom already had three under ten to take care of, so the neighbor girl came down to help <coughs> from just the first place north. Well, in casual conversation, she said, Papa's going to have to sell the farm. You know, it was just the end of a real severe depression. And it was hard. Prices were very, very low. 
Well, my father heard that and he made arrangements to buy that farm. And by March, we were moving up the road next door to where we live now. January, March, May. Pigeon River Church had need of a past, uh, another on the pastoral team. And so my father was selected to serve as that role. So that brought another area of responsibility to serve as pastor and, and probably pre preaching every third Sunday. One thing that I've heard that was kind of a keynote of my dad's preaching was often he would begin with a short song like, uh, oh, what was that song? I thought I wrote it down. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. And I think that was Dad's real desire for himself and for his congregation. And that was traditional with his messages. My dad had a real passion for summer Bible school. It was held in Pigeon, and uh, lots of children attended, but he wanted it to be available for the children in Bayport. So what did he do? He took the farm wagon that we used to haul corn and sugar beets. He borrowed stock racks from Uncle Richard to put on the sides, put a tarp over top and benches inside, and then hooked it to the family car, and then he traveled out to Bayport, and he picked up children, and took them into Pigeon every day for 10 days. Um, we wouldn't do it quite that way. <laughs> But that was something Dad wanted to do. And, and he had a real concern for his class. I remember one year he was teaching the seventh grade, and he was really concerned that his students learn about Jesus and that they would accept him as their savior. Um, Dad loved to serve. Now let's shift on to another in our background that was really a, valuable to us, and that is Irma's father. Dan Gingrich is his name. Well, soon after Irma and I were married, uh, we started farming on our own, and he gave us a B. John Deere tractor and that tractor was one we used for planting, we used it for cultivating and pulling wagons in harvest time, and even later Irma used it in her well-known field trips. That bee is still in our shed. We value it very much. We also wanted to start raising pigs. Well, you know, to have that, you need some females. And so, Grandpa offered us five of his Duroc feeder pigs, females. Well, we were up there, which is 92 miles from our farm to their farm. We didn't have a pickup. So we put those female pigs in, each in a burlap bag, and we, it's almost home. Actually, we're coming out of Seabling, heard a kind of a strange noise in the back. <laughs> we stopped and looked. Two of the pigs had suffocated. That wasn't good. But three of them survived, and that was the start of our wine program. <laughs> Grandpa always, also cared about family. And so one time when they came over, they brought a wagon 
that's just the right size to fit behind Irma's 318 mower. And that wagon is used for planting potatoes and tomatoes. It's used for hauling mulch out to the, feet, to the garden. It's used for bringing produce in from the garden, like watermelons or squash. Wouldn't you agree, Irma, that's a very important part of your gardening? Grandma had faith, too. And the last time we visited him in Florida, it was evening and he got out a couple of his hymn notes. And on the back page, he had written names and numbers of songs that he really appreciated. We have one of those hymn notes, and I looked in the back page, and um, one song was, Oh Happy Day. And that song refers to the past, and it goes, Oh happy day that fixed my choice on thee my Savior and my God. That was special to Grandpa. Another song was, on Jordan's stormy banks I stand, referring to the Israelites at the edge of Jordan waiting to enter into the promised land. And it compares that to our experience, how, especially in later life, we are at the edge of the promised land. We need to promise Passover and enjoy what God has prepared for us. So Grandpa wasn't only looking back, he was looking ahead and being blessed by that thought. Oh, what else did I have to say? I guess I'm coming up to the fact that it's time to talk about the present. <coughs> Um, I've always loved farming, but it has changed. Now it's growing a patch of sweet corn, and it's uh, helping with the tomatoes and the squash and the potatoes, and uh, I enjoy that. And two, it has become more watching rather than doing. Like I like to watch the planting getting done, and watch the crops grow, and watch the harvest happen. Um, another thing I enjoy is watching my hens. They just love to lay eggs. Already this morning they had laid 18 eggs, and uh, oh, beautiful brown eggs. I love my hens. Um, life is good. I'm talking about the present. And just to underline that, last evening Irma and I were watching Jeopardy. And would you believe it? There was three answers that I knew that those three did not know. <laughs> Actually, that's true. I think Irma was sleeping, but I <laughs> One answer was Dearborn, Michigan. I don't remember the question. <laughs> the other was good too. Another challenge I face is we got a book in the mail from my daughter and her husband, and uh, they know I like doing Zudaku. But usually I'll start with the easy, get into the intermediate and then quit there. <laughs> but this book is all difficult. <laughs> oh. I did manage to do one in 35 minutes, but yesterday I did one. It took a whole hour. Not right steady, but it's difficult. But I'm trying to keep this brain working. Um, Okay, so much for farming, now for family.
We don't choose our family. You know, think about that. You're just born into this family, and wow, we've got variety. <laughs> I mean, there's no two of you alike. And it's just so good that there's nobody like me. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, but they are a gift to us. And, and especially as I see you graduating, um, engagements, and ways that you serve, um, that's a blessing to me. Uh, I think 3 John 4 expresses my feelings. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. And that's what gives me joy. Oh, it also says future. I know more about the past than the future. <laughs> But uh, I have good hopes for the future. Um, not many of you will be farmers. That's kind of apparent. It isn't like it was for my dad. It was a family, family that was farming. And nowadays, one change that has brought that about is this. My dad's time, 80 acres was a good sized farm. He could make a living and, and get along well. Nowadays, that's probably 10 times that, more like 800 acres to a farm. And so you can see what that does. For instance, the change on the farm where we live, it used to be 12 acre fields. And you know, that was plenty big for a crop. Actually, in those days, I remember with our two-bottom plow, we could plow an acre an hour. So if it was a 12-acre field, it would take 12 hours. Well, now, you know, it'd be altogether different. Um, not many will be farmers. One thing I wanted to say is that I admire you that take up different occupations. I mean, farming is great, but we need teachers, we need pastors, we need... Oh, I look across you and there's such a variety. Some of you work in a dentist shop and, oh, you can do all kinds of things. That's a re remarkable and I'm glad for that. All are part of a family. Build strong relations. Maybe you didn't know, but last fall was a tough one to get harvesting done. I mean, snow come early before the beets were all harvested, but I saw some boys that really worked together and got that harvesting done. And I enjoy that, I appreciate that. Just Thursday, I was reading in a Sukhumi magazine, and it said that nationwide, there is a lot of sugar beets out yet that could be harvested. They said if they were all in one patch, it could be a mile wide and reach from Flint to the, to the Mackinac Bridge. That many sugar beets are still in the fields. So we're thankful to be done, and that we work together. Faith. I pray each will have a strong faith in the Lord Jesus as Savior and live for Him. That's the key to life. And now, yeah, I'm going to be 90. But who knows, maybe the Lord's going to give me another 10 years. <laughs> Would you be surprised? <laughs> uh, it, and it might be 10 days, who knows? And I'm content. But actually, I, I would prefer the 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.